Okay, we're going to move on then to uh, question number six. We've got a group of students that measured the heights of 90 trees, and the mean of those heights is 12.4. So let's really think about what, uh, what we've learned here then. Remember that mean, by definition, is the sum of all of the values divided by the number of values. In this situation, then, our mean is 12.4. I don't know what the sum of my values is, but I know that I've got 90 trees. And so I can rearrange by multiplying both sides of the equation by 90 in order to figure out what the total sum of all of my tree heights is. Let's see what I get then. 12.4 times 90. So my trees all add up to a total height of 1,116 meters. Okay, now then, uh, if the standard deviation is 5.35, you would expect, on average, a tree would be 5.35 meters less or 5.35 meters higher than the mean. And of course, we know that 68% of our data is within uh, one standard deviation of our mean. These tree measurements are like six standard deviations above the mean. That's just not realistic, and they must be wrong. And so what we're going to do then, uh, whoops, actually, I've gotten ahead of myself. Part A says, how many standard deviations away from the mean of 12.4 is the value 44.5? So 12.4 is our mean. How many, let's call it K, how many of our standard deviations do I have to add in order to get to the value of 44.5? All right, so I need to solve for the number of standard deviations above my mean. So let's subtract 12.4 from both sides. And now I've got k times 5.35 is equal to only 32.1. All right, I've just subtracted 12.4 from both sides. And now I'll divide both sides by 5.35. So 32.1 divided by 5.35, and that gives me the number of standard deviations is going to be five, uh, 6 exactly. So that is 6 standard deviations above the mean. Now part B says that we're going to remove these incorrect measurements from the data. So from my 1116 meter total value, I'm going to subtract the heights of those two trees. I'm going to get rid of them from my data. And so let's see what my new total height is once I got rid of those two unrealistic measurements. So we'll subtract 44.5, and we'll subtract 43.2. And our new total height is going to be 1,028.3. The question, however, is asking us for the new value of the mean. And so let's take this new total height, 1,028.3. Remember that we removed two trees, and so now there's only going to be uh, 88 trees that I'm dividing my total number, uh, my total height by. So let's work this out. We'll take our answer of 1,028.3, and we'll divide it by 88. And now we'll find that our new mean, when I round to three significant figures, is equal to 11.7 meters. On to question number seven. These are the numbers of games played in each set of a tennis tournament. And so all of that data has been organized into this frequency table. We have to first write down the value of n. Well, okay, n represents the number of times in which we played eight games in a set. So let's just mark those. One, two, three, four. So clearly, we played eight games in a set four times, so n must be four. Calculate the mean number of games played per set. Well, this is where we're going to want to go into stat and enter our values into list one and list two again. So let's clear our old list. And here we go. So we got 6 through 13.
and then in list 2, which will be the corresponding frequencies, 2 and 5, n was 4, and now we've got a couple more 4s and 3 2s. And we should just check that the number of elements in each list match. Yes, they do. Okay, so now we're ready then to go into stat, calculate, one of our stats, and here our data values were entered into list 1, and our frequencies were entered into list 2. So you must include both of those in your one var stats function, and you can see that the mean is 9.08. Nicely already rounded the three significant figures for us. Okay? Or it's in fact it's exactly 9.08, it's not even rounded. What percentage of the sets had more than 10 games? Okay, well you can see that the total number of sets played... Uh, boy, I'm going to have to go up and, uh, and count this, aren't I? Um, oh, actually, no, I don't. The number here is 25. That represents the sum of all of the frequencies. But I could count manual if you wanted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 24, 25. There are indeed 25, uh, 25 different sets have been played. What percentage had more than 10 games? Well, more than 10 games means that it was either 11, 12, or 13. So we can see then that there's a total of 6 of our 25 sets played, and it wants us to express it as a percentage. Well, 6 divided by 25 is equal to 0 0.24, and if I convert this into a percentage, I'm going to have to multiply it by 100% to convert it into a percentage, and that gives us an answer of 24% for part C. And lastly, part D asks us, what is the modal number of games? Mode means the one that occurred the most frequently. Five was the highest number in the frequency table, and so the modal number of games was seven. Onwards now to question number eight. Here's a cumulative frequency table with the ages of 200 students at a college. Now remember that cumulative frequency represents the sum so far. So, so far we've got three students. There they are. Now we've got three plus 72 students. So far we've got a total of 75. Then three plus 72 plus 62 is 137. So if we add another 31, we should end up with the M value. Or you could just add all four of these values together, whichever way you do it. We know that the value of m is going to be the sum of all of our different numbers of students so far. And that's going to give us an answer of 168. Uh, how many students are younger than 20? Well, here are our students that are younger than 20. Let's add those three numbers of students together. 3 plus 72 plus 62. Or, of course, we could just read off this value right here. This is the total accumulated number of students who are less than 20. 17, 18, and 19 added together. Either way, you get 137. And then find the value in years of the lower quartile. Now, the lower quartile, if we've got 200 students, the lower quarter of them means that we're dealing with the uh, lowest 50 of the students. So where did we reach our 50th student? Well, so far we've only got to three students, but when we included our 18-year-olds, we now reached a total of 75 students, meaning that somewhere in this 18-year-old category, we passed the 50th student. And so our 50th student, our lowest quartile, must be 18 years old. Well, I wish all of them were as quick as that. Let's move on to number 9. Okay, and Atlas has given us this information about the population of cities in the year 2000, but Nairobi was left out. The Atlas tells us that the mean population is 10.01 million. Let's just ignore the millions for a moment. It's kind of going to throw us off. Let's just ignore it and just deal with the numbers, and then we can throw million on to the end in our answer. And so we know that the sum, let's call this value x. So we know that the sum of all of these seven values divided by the number of values will be the mean. Right? So remember that mean 
is the sum of the values divided by the number of values. In our situation, our mean is 10.01. So if we add all of these values, we've got 3.2 plus 7.2 plus etc. all the way up to 2.1 at the end, divided by 7. All right, let me add these values over here. So I've got 3.2 plus 7.2. I'll leave the x until the end, plus 9.6, 17.7, 28, and 2.1. So that gives us so far a total of 67.8 plus our unknown value of x. That's the total sum of all seven of these cities and divided by 7. Well, in order to isolate x, we're first going to need to multiply both sides of the equation by 7. And then to get x alone, we'll need to subtract 67.8 from both sides. 70.07 minus 67.8 gives us an answer of 2.27. And so, 2.27. Let's add on now the word million. The population in Nairobi then is 2.27 million, because that was our units. Which city has the median population value? Well, that means putting all of the populations into order. So if you wanted to show your work, we would actually put them into order. So the smallest one then is Seattle. And then comes Nairobi. Then comes Melbourne. Then comes Bangkok, then Paris, then Sao Paulo, and then Tokyo. And I'll cross off the smallest and biggest, smallest and biggest, smallest and biggest, and our median population value. Read the question again. It doesn't ask us for the median. It says which city has got the median. Clearly then, that's going to be Bangkok. Question number 10. A marine biologist has recorded a frequency distribution of 100 mackerel. They've all been rounded to the nearest centimeter. And we can see the results there. All right, we need to construct a cumulative frequency table for this data. Whenever you, uh, and later on, by the way, we'll be drawing a cumulative frequency curve. This is the only time that you're going to need to graph things using the right end point of the interval, meaning that we will be using these values to graph on the cumulative frequency curve. All right, but we'll get there in a minute. First, we need to construct a cumulative frequency table. And so this is going to be our cumulative frequency column. And so we know that we just sort of add on the values that we've got so far. So far, we've got only two. And then we've got another four. That's a total of six so far. Then we add on another eight. Now we're at 14. Add on 21. Now we're at 35. Add on 30. We're at 65. Add on 18. We're at 83. Add on 12. We're at 95. And add on 5. That gives us our total of 100 mackerel as expected. In fact, if I did not arrive to a total of 100 mackerel, well, then I would probably have to check my work again in the cumulative frequency column. All right, part B, draw a cumulative frequency curve. And the hint, you're lucky you got a hint, most questions won't tell you this, that you should plot your cumulative frequencies at the top of each interval. So remember that we will use our mid-interval values when you're looking for an estimate of the mean and the standard deviation, and you will use the upper endpoints of each interval when you are looking for a cumulative frequency curve. So I need to plot points going all the way from well, all the way out to 43. So let's find a piece of graph paper. I need to plot values that go all the way out to 43. I think I'm going to... Uh, again, I need to move this over so I can see my scale. Right. So to get out to 43, let's start at 0, and I'm going to go up in, uh, in increments of uh, 3, I guess. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 
I just thought about it. This is a terrible idea, because back in my question now, I realize all of my values were sort of organized by twos, weren't they? Uh, so let's go back and, uh, and make a change then to our plan. I'll uh, erase these. And let's, uh, let's start again. So, uh, well, hmm, how's this going to work? If I need to go up by twos, yeah, I'm not really going to quite make it. This is going to get really quite messy. Um, well, I think what I'm going to have to do is, uh, boy, oh boy, yeah, I'm a little stuck here. Um, all right, well, I, I guess what I'll just do is go up uh, in threes like I did a moment ago, and uh, I'll just do my best to graph the uh, graph the places in between these uh, these spots. Sorry about that. And as soon as I got up to 42, I think that's enough. Because I, oh, no, I actually need to go up to 43, don't I? So let's just go one more to 45. Good enough. And then my frequencies, I can see, get uh, my cumulative frequency goes all the way up to 100. And since I'm building a cumulative frequency curve, I, of course, need to go up to at least 100. So I'm going to go up by 10s here. 10, 20, 30, 40. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so now, because I'm doing a cumulative frequency curve, this axis is our cumulative frequency. And I think I was dealing with the weights. Oh, no, they are the lengths of the fish. Okay, so these are lengths of the mackerel. And I imagine the unit is in centimeters, yes. Okay, centimeters. Now I'm ready to put in uh, all of my data. I'm going to have to keep flipping back and forth. So remember that I'm graphing at the right end point. So at 29, I'll have a cumulative frequency of 2. So at 29, which is about here, I've got a cumulative frequency of 2. Next, at my next right end point of 31, I'm now up to a cumulative frequency of 6. So at 31, I'm now at 6. Next, I've got a right end point of 33, which has reached 14. So 33 is now at 14. And by the way, I should also have a point all the way over here at 0, because there's exactly 0 that have, uh, that have a, uh, of course, a 0 mackerel that got a length of 0. Um, it's possible that IB would have accepted that you draw your cumulative frequency curve beginning at 27, the leftmost point of this smallest interval. About that, I'm, I'm not really certain. I'll uh, have to get back to you on that. But uh, anyway, I, I, I like going down to, uh, to zero. Uh, but yeah, now that I think about it, I think we probably could have actually started at 27. Yeah, that would have solved my problem at the beginning. So yeah, you might have drawn your, your axis down here instead. And, uh, and perhaps your first point is right here. But if you did it like me, then your first point is out here. Anyway, regardless, we know that we've got zero fish all the way along here. And now they start going up. Uh, we're now at sort of 35, I think. So I'll do these ones quicker. 35, 65, 83. So we're at uh, 35. Then 37 is uh, 65. And then when we get to 39, we're at 83. I got to check for the other two. Uh, then we have 95 and 100 for our right endpoints of 41 and 43. So 95 and uh, 100. Now 43. And I'll draw a nice smooth curve through them as best I can. It's not great, but it will do. And uh, that's our cumulative frequency curve. Part C. Use the cumulative frequency curve to find an estimate to the nearest centimeter for the median length of the mackerel. All right, so our 
our median length, well, we've got a total of 100 mackerel. The median occurs halfway up at 50. So let's trace across at 50 and then see what this corresponds to. Looks to be, well, somewhere around 36, give or take, doesn't it? And uh, we're normally allowed a little margin of error. So I'm going to write down 36. So the median length is 36 centimeters. Next, it asks for the interquartile range. So I'll have to find my upper quartile and then my lower quartile. So the upper quartile will be 3 quarters of 100. That's 75. And it looks like my weight, or sorry, my uh, length looks to be around 38 or so. So that's Q3 equals 38. And then my first quartile, or lower quartile, is going to be one quarter of 100. So I'm going to write across at 25. And then hop down. And it looks to be at approximately 34, 33. I mean, uh, let's, I'm going to make mine 33 and a half. It's kind of uh, eyeballing anyway. So Q1 is about 33.5, say. And our interquartile range is going to be the difference between these. So it's 38 minus 33.5. And that gives us 4.5 centimeters as our interquartile range. And uh, I think before I move on to number 11, I'll pause and uh, make one more video.